Hello and welcome to this Trove video. As we approach the end of the year, we thought it would be a good idea and of some interest to take a look back over activity in Namibia since the discovery of the giant Venus field. This is the license map for Namibia taken off the NAMCOR website. It shows where the blocks are which have had most drilling activity and as you can see they are concentrated in the south of the country within the Orange Basin. They include the Total Energies block with a Venus discovery, the Shell block with a Graf discovery, the Galp Energia block with a Mopani discovery, the Rhino block with its three discoveries, plus the BW block with the appraisal drilling on Kudu, the Pan Canadian block with its undrilled Saturn fan complex, and not forgetting Pell 73 in the northeast of the country where Recon Africa have an exploration program ongoing. Kicking off with the Total Energies license, PEL 56 and 91, the Venus block. The Venus 1X well was the first well on the block, drilled in 2022. The play comprises a light oil and gas reservoir within Apto Albion aged basin floor fan sandstones, underlain by oil mature Aptian source rocks, and sealed by encasing Cretaceous shales within a counter regional stratigraphic trap configuration. The block diagram on the left nicely shows the depositional model for the Venus fan. It's essentially a basin floor fan, as shown by these amplitudes, fed by feeder channels coming off the shelf to the east. The seismic line in the centre here shows where the Venus field sits with respect to the basement underneath and also the fact that it sits at the, towards the base of the overburden, the post-drift overburden, and the source rock is sitting right underneath the reservoir. On the right, this little seismic blow up shows where the reservoir is and how close it is to the basement with its seaward dipping reflectors. And as a summary of the reservoir, it shows that we've got 137 meters of gross reservoir split into an upper fan and a lower fan, giving a net pay of 84 meters. Following on from the discovery well, Venus 1X, Total Energies went on to drill six more wells on PEL 56 and 91. They include three successful appraisal wells and four exploration wells. The appraisal wells are Venus 1A and Venus 2A to the north of Venus 1X, and then a bolder step out to Mangeti 1X in the north of the field. This well also had a deeper target. Although Total Energies have yet to confirm the hydrocarbon in place for Venus, we understand that it could be in the order of 2 billion barrels of oil equivalent. Of the four exploration wells, Nara 1X, drilled to the west here, encountered oil and gas, but we understand is uncommercial. The Mangeti 1X well, drilled into the underlying Tamboti fan and encountered black oil, as did the Tamboti 1X exploration well, drilled in the same fan. We understand this encountered 85 metres of net reservoir oil bearing, black oil. However, the Marula 1X well to the south here was a dry hole. Future plans. We understand that Total Energies are in discussion with Namcor on the fiscal terms for Venus uh, development and uh, an FID target is Q4 2026. First oil is, we understand, planned for 2029 if all goes well and this will be via an FPSO. The Venus oil is quite gassy so there will be a significant gas reinjection program as part of that development. Future exploration, the Olympi prospect located here has been described by Total as having an Albion sandstone within a structural closure. It sits on this rather strange looking fan outline. Looks a little odd to me, but I guess they've had to draw it this way or interpret it this way so that it's separate from the Venus field and also from the Marula 1X dry hole. This presentation is designed to be a high level review of the activity in Namibia and so necessarily does not dwell on detail for any of the discoveries or uh, fields. But all the information presented here and much, much more is available in the Trove databases, which are available through subscription. Moving on to the Shell license, PEL 39, we call this the Graph block. Graph 1X was the first one on the block, also drilled in 2022, like Venus. The play comprises light oil and gas reservoir in Santonian to Senemanian, basin floor to slope fan sandstones, underlain by oil mature Bremian to Senemanian source rocks, sealed by encasing Cretaceous shales in a stratigraphic trap configuration, down dip from the well-imaged gravity slide complex. The cartoon or geoseismic on the left here shows the nature of the 
graph play. Uh, it also shows the underlying Venus play here. And whereas the Venus field up dip seal is to the west, caused by this counter regional dip, the graph play looks to be sealed by the basal thrust of the gravity slide complex. It sits higher in the stratigraphic section, but uh, as you can see on this seismic line, the source rocks are identified at Cenomanian and Bremian to Aptian level beneath the reservoir. You can see the seaward dipping reflectors nicely imaged here on this seismic line. Following on from the Graph 1X discovery, Shell went on to drill eight further wells, a mixture of appraisal wells and exploration wells. They're listed here. I won't go through them individually, but suffice to say that most wells encountered light oil and associated gas in Upper Cretaceous marine sandstones. However, commercial feasibility is challenged due to geological complexities and reservoir quality problems within these discoveries. And consequently, you may recall, Shell announced a $400 million write down in January 2025. Consequently, no more drilling activity was planned, although Shell are continuing to assess the commerciality of the block. Speculated hydrocarbon in place numbers that we've seen are Graf 200 million barrels of oil equivalent and Yonker 300 million barrels of oil equivalent. Disappointing when you consider what's happening next door in the Venus block. Moving on to PEL 83, the license operated by Galp Energia and containing the Mopani discovery. Mopani 1X was the first well on the block drilled in 2024 and it encountered light oil and gas condensate in a reservoir level AVO1. The play comprises light oil and gas condensate Reservoired in high quality stacked Cenomanian and Turonian sands with high reservoir pressures, but minimal CO2 and H2S. It's likely that underlying Beremian to Albion source rocks provide the charge. The trap type is unconfirmed as far as we can see, but it's possibly a stratigraphically trapped toe of slope fan complex with multiple reservoirs as shown on this cartoon geoseismic here. Note that Mopani sits underneath the gravity slide complex, which is just up dip of the graph discovery. Galp went on to drill four successful appraisal wells, shown on this map to the right, and all wells encountered similar reservoir and hydrocarbon qualities as Mopani 1X. However, you can see from the summary above that the hydrocarbons were found at a variety of different reservoir levels. To date, no oil water contact has been encountered. The reservoirs are high pressured uh, and there is evidence of pressure continuity and therefore reservoir continuity between some of the reservoirs and wells and that's obviously good news. Well tests are in the order of 14,000 barrels of oil a day, that's also good news but with these high pressured wells it's always good to know if there was any pressure depletion associated with the tests. In terms of volumetrics, these are the GALP numbers. They estimate for the whole complex as a whole 10 billion barrels of oil in place and for the main Mapani field area a recoverable reserves of 875 million barrels of oil equivalent. Future plans, well a 3D seismic was planned for 2025 um, earlier in the year we presume that's completed that needs to be confirmed and not surprisingly further wells are also planned but we're not aware yet of any Mopani FID timeline. Pell 85 is the license operated by Rhino Resources and is situated just to the south of the Mopani discovery and northeast of the Graf discovery. They have made three discoveries on the block so far, but there are a few details. The first well, Sagittarius 1X, was drilled in February this year and is the northernmost of the three. It encountered hydrocarbons in an upper Cretaceous reservoir, but no oil water contact was observed. Capricornus 1X is a different plate of Sagittarius, drilled in April, is the southernmost of the three. It encountered 38 metres of light oil net pay in a lower Cretaceous reservoir and on test flowed over 11,000 barrels of oil of 38 degree API oil. This was, uh, we understand, surface constrained with limited associated gas. There is no H2S and less than 2% CO2 reported. And again, no oil water contact was observed. The third of the three, the third well, Voland 1X in the middle here was drilled in August. This tested a new play comprising sheet reservoirs. It encountered 26 metres of light oil gas condensate neck pay in Upper Cretaceous Reservoir. Excellent petrophysical properties were encountered, but no oil water contact. The oil gravity here is slightly lighter at 40 API with a CGR of greater than 140, so quite a rich condensate. So that's all quite encouraging. 
and we look forward to further activity on this block. GPL3 is the Kudu license containing the Kudu gas field and operated by BW Energy. They acquired 5,000 square kilometers of 3D seismic and this was acquired to identify upside on the license. As a consequence, the Karas prospect was mapped to the northwest of the Kudu field over here. And in October this year, the Karas one well was drilled to test multiple horizons. The location of Karas 1X is shown here. Now, after completing the well, BW Energy stated that the well was not actually optimally placed for any of the target horizons. This seemed an odd strategy indeed, since this surely increased the likelihood of failure at each target horizon, which seemed to have been the case. Notwithstanding that, the operator have stated that initial results are encouraging. The well encountered several shallow turbidite reservoirs with uh, dry gas shows, and condensate and light oil were encountered at a deeper fractured volcaniclastic reservoir level. So they confirm that a working petroleum system is present. This should come as no real surprise given the proximity of the well to Kudu and Mopani. They also state that liquid hydrocarbons are now confirmed on the license, but it would be very good to get some more detail on exactly what those liquid hydrocarbons are. So potential future plans for the block they clearly believe that there is potential for some follow-up appraisal drilling. We don't know any more than that, but I have to say on the face of it, it seems that the well result is fairly disappointing. Okay, next up is Pell 87, the license operated by Pan Continental and contains the undrilled Saturn Superfan complex. The Saturn play essentially consists of Aptian aged deep marine turbidite sandstones overlain by thick alboaptian marine shales and underlain by the Aptian Kudu Shale source rock, which is interpreted to be oil mature at Saturn. The trap is principally stratigraphic, but has some structural elements, we understand. Moosehead 1X is the only well drilled on the block so far, drilled in 2013. It lies 40 kilometers to the south of Saturn, approximately. It did prove the existence of the Kudu Shale on block, and it also encountered Saturn-aged equivalent siltstones, which was probably useful in setting up the play. The well was p and oil shows. In terms of future plans, they include continuing to de-risk the prospectivity through AVO analysis, sequence stratigraphy analysis, and basin modeling. It's worth pointing out that the license is in the first renewal period and that Pan Continental are currently farming down their equity to fund exploration drilling. They've been doing this for a couple of years now, so maybe Saturn is not quite the low-hanging fruit we all thought it was. Nevertheless, eight prospects and leads have been defined, but no timeline yet for the for drilling this uh, these prospects has been issued that we know of anyway. These next few slides are taken off a Pan Continental presentation from their website, and it's dated the 28th of November, so it's a very recent presentation. On the bottom left here, this map shows the Saturn complex broken down into its various elements. Some of these are adjacent or lateral to each other, whilst others are stacked vertically. The seismic line to the right is a west-east seismic line through Saturn, and it shows how it's effectively situated down dip from what looks like an eroded shelf edge, such that the Saturn complex is effectively infilling the depot center created by the erosion of that shelf. It doesn't appear to have a particularly fan shape to it, but you can certainly understand how you might get a series of stacked reservoirs within it as the depot center gets progressively filled and heals the slope. The seaward dipping reflectors are very nicely shown on this seismic line. Pan Continental believe that all the existing discoveries in the Orange Basin here are supported by AVO anomalies and all Pell 87 prospects exhibit class 2, class 3 AVO anomalies. Their lambda row analysis supports upgrading some of their Saturn elements or leads from lead status to prospect status, and that includes the Northern Channel and Phoebe West. So this is their lambda row interpretation, a north-south line through the northern part of the Saturn complex shown here. That's these two elements here. North Channel and Phoebe West. Time will tell whether their lambda row analysis is correct. This is a summary of the operator hydrocarbon in place estimates. They have a detailed table of all the prospects and leads broken down into stoic and uh, recoverable reserves with chances of successes. But this is just a summary. It shows that overall the Saturn complex has an 
an in-place number most likely of 13.1 billion barrels and a recoverable reserve of 3.6 billion barrels. Taking those two together gives you a recovery factor of about 27%. The geological chances of success range from 16 to 26% depending on which lead or prospect you're looking at. This line is also from that presentation. It's a northwest to southeast seismic line through the Saturn complex on the ultra far offsets and it shows five of the leads prospects that uh, Pancontinental have uh, identified. Hyrax, Oryx, Adax, Phoebe West and Northern Channel. You might recall that Northern Channel and Phoebe West have been upgraded to prospect status and certainly Northern Channel looks like it's got something of interest going on. Whereas I have to say that Adax and Hyrax look pretty weak by comparison. Oryx is interesting. It seems to be some drape over a deeper feature. The overburden looks quite interesting, but I can't help noticing this mounded feature over Hyrax, which might warrant further investigation. These images, also from the pan-continental presentation. On the left, a paleogeography map showing the presumed delta shelf complex to the east and the Saturn fan complex down dip to the west. The map in the middle is a source rock maturity map and it shows that the Saturn complex is underlain by oil mature kudu shale in its central and northeast portions but that kudu shale gets gas prone to the northeast so you have to wonder whether there is a bit of a gas risk for the Saturn play. One presumes that this interpretation has been calibrated by the kudu field. In the bottom right here is a seismic line showing the proximity of the Saturn complex to the kudu shale which directly underlies it creating a nice short migration path. The demarcation for the top of the oil window looks a little bit strange. Um, it's essentially paralleling the seabed but even so no one is uh, doubting the presence of a working hydrocarbon system here. Okay let's not forget onshore Namibia with Recon Africa in Pell 73 in the northeast of the country where they are continuing with their exploration activity. Now there are two principal play fairways on the block. There is the Karoo Graben fairway shown in green here, which is essentially a series of horses and grabens. And then in older stratigraphy is the Damara Fold Belt to the southwest, which comprises a series of structures related to thrust fault anticlines. Now three wells have tested the Karoo play to date, the Kawi 62, Mbambi 61, and the Makandina 82 wells. And they are shown here on this map, the cluster just here, which on this map are in this area here. One well has tested the Damara play so far, the Nengopo 11 -1 well, located to the south here, which would be down here on this map. And they are currently drilling the second Damara well, Kavango West 1X, which it's hard to say from their website where that is, but I suspect it's up here. And this well is planned to be completed by the end of November. Now it has to be said when you look at the well results that um, essentially they are all dry holes. They have PA with minor oil and gas shows as defined by the operator but no success as yet so quite disappointing but you know, fair play to them. They're continuing with it with their exploration program and we watch the area with interest. Well that brings the review to an end. I hope you've enjoyed it. If so please like it but also consider subscribing to Trove, where, as previously stated, there is a wealth of information available on many assets and countries. So if you are interested, please contact us at the website shown. Thank you.